So I am trained as a Mesoamerican archaeologist, which is, uh, so I did all my field work and my research in Belize and Guatemala, working on ancient Maya sites, and I've traveled extensively through, through Mexico, collecting information and data. Uh, and so that's what I was trained as. I was trained as a Mesoamerican archaeologist, someone who specialized in Maya and Maya architecture. But I haven't been working as a Mesoamerican archaeologist for a, a, a while. So currently, I'm the director of programs at the Archaeological Institute of America, and I teach part-time. Uh, so I'm an assistant professor at the Berklee College of Music, where I don't teach music. But I do teach uh, archaeology courses through uh, the art history program at Berkeley. Berkeley is a liberal arts college, and so, so the students have to do uh, a variety of courses, including some art history courses. So that's so I do that and I teach courses on Mesoamerican art and archaeology and just general archaeology courses at Berkeley. But my, my main job, my full-time position is as the director of programs for the Archaeological Institute of America. The AIA is a nonprofit. We are kind of unique in that we have both professional members and we have uh, a general interested audience uh, of members. Uh, and my job as director of programs is to provide services and uh, for, for both constituencies. So we do um, things like grants and fellowships and uh, we have a site preservation program all geared toward our professional members. Uh, but then for the general public, we do a lot of outreach and education and the organization itself has uh, 108 local societies. And so they, they work with us as well. So it is, it is all about uh, informing, educating, and providing resources uh, for the public and for our professional members. So that's what I do currently. Uh, I'm not in the field doing active field work, but I work with a lot of archaeologists and I feel like um, uh, I'm kind of their support staff. I do all the things that they need to help them get their work done properly. Uh, so that's what I do. So interestingly, I got into archaeology by accident. <laughs> It wasn't what I'd actually planned on doing. Uh, I moved to the US for college. Uh, and when I came into college, I was an economics major. But luckily, I went to a liberal arts college. I went to Brandeis University, which is a liberal arts school. Uh, and because I was in a liberal arts college, I had to do courses that were outside of my major. And my sophomore year, I took an anthropology course, which I absolutely loved. It was with this great professor, Professor Messick, who talked, talked about Muslim cultures, had done all his field work in Yemen and Morocco. And I was just blown away. I didn't know you could do things like that. I didn't know you could study groups, people, cultures, languages in the way that he had. Uh, I didn't know anthropology existed as a possible career choice. So I started taking more anthropology courses. And during that, that exploration of anthropology, I discovered archaeology absolutely fell in love with it, fell in love with the fieldwork aspect of it, the research part of it, the kind of idea that, you know, you go into these places and uncover clues and try to figure out what happened there a thousand years ago was just fascinating to me. And so uh, that was it. Once I took a few archaeology courses, I, I, I realized I was not going to do anything with an economics major, but I was going to try and make an anthropology and archaeology major work. So I kind of fell into it accidentally and then uh, continued with it. Uh, so from Brandeis, I went to Boston University, and there at Boston University, I discovered Mesoamerican archaeology. Uh, again, kind of by accident. I had not intended to go to BU for Mesoamerican archaeology, but had an opportunity to go do a field season in Belize, and, and again, uh, fell in love with the country, the culture, the archaeology, uh, the heat, the humidity, the mosquitoes, everything. It was it was it was amazing, uh, and that's what I ended up doing. I, so I focused on. Uh, uh, the, the Mesoamerican region, specifically on the Maya and specifically on Maya architecture and domestic architecture. I was really interested in how just regular Maya folks lived, the houses they built and, you know, the things that they had in their homes. Uh, that was really what sort of uh, drew me to archaeology and Mesoamerican archaeology. I tell people there's a, there are two main reasons why we should care about archaeology. One is that it, it really is helping us understand who we are, where we come from, tells those stories of the past. It tells stories about people that can no longer talk for themselves in most cases, right? I mean, we're looking at cultures in some cases that are 
so far in the past that there are uh, no direct voices from those from those spaces. And so what we are doing with the archaeology is, you know, in that sense, giving voice to the voiceless. But it is really about telling a story about the past. It really is about uh, filling in the gaps of the human story to really help us understand kind of where we came from, the things that we encountered in the past, how human uh, humans dealt with those things and, you know, what that can tell us about the future. And so that leads to point two, which is that, man, archaeology is just this incredible database of human behavior. We have all this incredible information of how humans acted, how they responded to certain changes in their environment, in their culture, you know. So we know how people did things and we can learn from that. There's so much information there that just needs to be looked at, needs to be analyzed and needs to be kind of considered in light of our modern situation. So a lot of these things that we think are new to human, the human condition are things that in some form uh, people in the past have encountered. And we know how they responded. We know about their successes. We know about their failures. And there are a lot of things that we can learn uh, from that. And I, and I feel like, you know, it is again, just this incredible database of human behavior uh, and, and human uh, interactions and human responses uh, that should inform us. And so I think it's important as archaeologists to keep making not just statements about what happened in the past, but connecting that to what we do today to say, there are things that we can learn from the past. And it, you know, it's cli as cliche as it sounds, you know, the idea that history repeats itself and that, you know, what we, you know, we learn from history, what is, his what is the past is prologue. All those things are absolutely true. Uh, yeah, and, and I think it is important for people to realize that. I think it's, it, it, it helps us understand what happened in the past and it informs what we do currently and hopefully helps us to plan, you know, what we need to do going forward because we do see what happened to these ancient cultures. We do see them rise, fall, rise again. And I think that is an important uh, thing for us to continue to look at and to learn from. So yeah, so I think it's important. I think, uh, you know, people should do, I'm not saying everybody should be archeologists, but it is important and it should be valued. So again, no simple answers with me. Everything is a three-part answer, let's say. So, um, you know, I will say this, the, this is not the most exciting, but it's the most meaningful to me was doing that very first excavation in Mesoamerica. I was in Belize working on a small Maya house. Uh, you know, the, the excavation was about 12 feet by 12 feet, but it was incredible. It was my first experience with Maya archeology span uncovering the remains of the first plaster floor that was over a thousand years old, finding uh, broken pottery and stone tools uh, that were part of this, uh, this residence was just incredible, right? I mean, that, that's what got me excited about my archeology. span It's what keeps me going in the, in the field. Uh, and so that first excavation will always be probably the most meaningful ex excavation but the most spectacular excavation I worked on was also on a Maya site in northwestern Belize, a site called La Milpa, where I had the opportunity of working on a, an elite structure. Uh, so it was this large, you know, when we got there, large dirt, grass and tree covered mound. By the time we had exposed a good chunk of it, we had discovered the remains of a structure that had walls over six foot tall, still preserved limestone uh, blo uh, block walls. But the incredible thing was it was all plastered and painted red. So you could walk in through a doorway onto a beautiful, almost pristine red plaster floor uh, into a back room that had this bench that was decorated with plaster and colored plaster attached to the back wall. Uh, all the while realizing that this building was over a thousand years old and you were probably the first person to walk into it in that sense in a thousand years. And that just was, just blew my mind. It was spectacular. It was, uh, you know, you didn't know, or I didn't know at that point that archaeology could could feel like that. Because in addition to all the sort of the intellectual stimulation of what we were seeing and what we were encountering, there was that pure sort of physical thrill of, of stepping onto a floor that was, you know, over a thousand years old. And you were, you were sweeping it up like it was, you know, your home and you're sweeping the dust away, the dirt away and exposing this beautiful, beautiful, uh, red plaster floor. It was it was unbelievable. So that I think was the most, and it was a huge building, and 
you know, all that kind of uh, the glamour of archaeology. Uh, so it was it was spectacular. I loved it. Um, uh, but again, like I said, that first that first uh, excavation was probably the most meaningful to me because it really just got me hooked on my archaeology. Uh, with what I do currently, since I'm not doing field work, I will say that working with our site preservation program is one of the most rewarding things uh, because it is it is incredible to be able to work with communities and projects around the world that are trying to preserve their cultural heritage and you know coming up with uh, working with these groups to come up with sort of with sort of creative solutions that we can then support uh, is is absolutely fantastic. So I mean I, you know I like this. There's no aspect of archaeology that I don't like, <laughs> but and you know all of this stuff is just exciting and fun, uh, and uh, yeah. So, like I said, you don't get I, I, all my answers are long <laughs> to these questions. <laughs>